Okay. And we obviously know those are fatal gunshots that took Trayvon Martin's life. Um, if, they don't, if they haven't figured it out by now, do you think they, there will be clarity? Whose screams uh, we just heard on that uh, recording? Well, there'll, there'll probably be hearings about whether uh, there are experts that can come in to do voice recognition. They've done that, and they said that they can conclude it was not Mr. Zimmerman's voice. They haven't concluded that it's Trayvon Martin, and the judge hasn't ruled whether or not it's admissible. But Experts but from the Zimmerman camp claim it is him. My point is there's certainly right. a zero consensus on right, this Right, but Richard, but, but can I just ask sure. you a question? Because here's the part I don't understand. On the message, he says he's got his hand in his... I don't know any layperson that talks like that. I don't know anybody that walks around with their hand, even gangsters, in their and their uh, waistband. That's language that police officials use. And remember, Zimmerman wanted to be a police officer, but failed. It sounds like on that tape, he was setting this up. It really does. Who says you're walking with, I mean, have you ever heard someone use that well, that's well, not a police the, the official? The other thing, though, to follow right on what you're talking about, the, the, the bigger thing to me, which goes right along with this, is the police, initially, he's coming toward me, he's checking me out. That's what Zimmerman says. So you give the impression that Zimmerman is being approached. But almost immediately after, and this is Zimmerman's 911 call, by the way, so this is not someone else. This is Zimmerman in his own words. After that, Trayvon Martin is running, not towards Zimmerman. He's running away. And because the police ask, where is he going? Oh, he's going toward one of the other exits, and I'm following him. And the officers say, well, you don't need to do that. So you're not at risk. You're not... Uh, you're not in danger at that point. Whatever he has, he's not targeting Mr. Zimmerman at that point. Mr. Zimmerman's going to have to explain that because that tape um, is, is going to be uh, significant. And let, it's let me ask, though, the reason we're talking about this case, let's be honest, these were two white guys <coughs> that this happened or these were uh, two people of color. We probably wouldn't be having this conversation. This wouldn't be the national case and put Sanford on the map for reasons I'm sure the city wouldn't want. Um, do we have uh, what President Obama uh, had to say, guys? Uh, take a listen to the president who even interjected him into this case here a few months ago. And when I think about uh, this boy, um, I think about my own kids. And you know, I think every parent in America uh, should be able to understand uh, why it is absolutely imperative that we investigate every aspect of this. You know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. And I think for a lot of people, um, that soundbite and others have really spoken. This trial, for many, is about race. And this is where we are as a country and racial treatment. We heard from the mayor for the, the Martin family saying, um, you know, if the roles were reversed as to who was the shooter, um, and who was the victim here, this would have been handled differently. At the end of the day, how do you try a case that isn't about what happened that night? It's also about who the people are, what they look like, what they brought to that evening in terms of their backgrounds, in terms of their expectations, in terms of how they saw that other person. I think you have to, you have to refocus this case to be specifically about what happened at that location. And if you don't do that, uh, I think that this case is as much about American jurisprudence, it's as much about our legal system in entirety as is about uh, Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman. And if you're not able to do that and to focus on what happened and didn't happen that day, at that particular day, not whether you like George Zimmerman or whether Trayvon Martin was a model child, if we can't focus just on what happened there, then we're going to have problems. Mm -hmm. And you're correct. If it was two African Americans, we would never have heard of this case, most likely. If it was two whites, we would probably not ever heard of this case. And what makes all of these cases um, newsworthy is, is whether someone's targeted based on being different, whether it's your sexual orientation or, or whatever it may be. Um, I think that you don't need to focus on that in this case. This case should not be about whether you are pro-gun, whether you're pro-stand your ground, what your ideology is. It ought to be a pretty straightforward, simple case. It should be uh, what happened on this day. There's a lot of evidence I, I in this rap, case. i got to guys, but we both know it's going to be a <coughs> lot more than just what happened that night. I, I'm, I'm getting angry even thinking about it, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I don't... This is clear. But this is clear. I, this is as clear as it gets. You and I both talk, we both agree on this one. 
But when you enter in things like stand your ground and the way the law was written. But he said he was running away. Well, he said you, on the on the 911 call that the kid was running away. If you the factor, kid didn't have a gun. The kid didn't have a knife. He was shot. Well, Dominic, if For you what? factor in stand your ground, then stand your ground may well support Trayvon Martin in this case. Because if he's running away, how much more does he have to run? So in, if anything, stand your ground probably would have benefited him because he's the person who was retreating. Okay. Prosecutor tells it straight down the middle and tries to avoid race. But the media is going to make it all about race. And this judge has got a lot on his hands. All right. Uh, the trial obviously just beginning. This will be, as um, the attorney said, a long, hot summer in Seminole County, and we will be covering it throughout. When we come back, an issue uh, that has sparked as many questions as answers right now, and it has to do with the post-9-11 America. The identity of the NSA leaker, it's been revealed, and the man's on the run. And we ask questions, not only what should we do about him, is he a hero or a traitor, depends on who you ask, but also, what should we, the people, feel about the program that we've just learned about, about what the NSA is doing and about the limits or lack thereof in terms of what they can or can't do when it comes to spying on us. We'll be right back, everyone. Stay with us.